so welcome back guys now let us discuss one complete example which illustrates the concept and mechanism of procedure call through this example we will understand the role of all these three registers that we just discussed and how these three register makes the procedure call mechanism feasible so let us suppose that in our example we have three functions function f1 invokes function f2 function f2 invokes function f3 so here you can see that we have a function f1 and function f1 invokes the function f2 you can see that the address of the instruction which invokes the function f2 is 1002 that is hexadecimal value similarly you have function f2 and inside this function f2 you have certain computations and eventually function f2 invokes function f3 using instruction using instruction whose address is 2004 so remember every instruction also has an address and finally we have a function 3 which do not invoke any other function and it just perform its local computation and returns so now let us discuss that at the instant when function f1 was executing how was it stack frame looked like so you can see in this diagram i have shown the stack frame of the function f1 the numbers which are written on the left hand side actually represents the address of the stack memory which decreases downwards right and you can see that in this stack frame of function 1 we have first pushed the arguments of the function 1 in the reverse order then we have the return address of the function 0 now let us suppose that function 0 is the caller of the function 1 and the next thing that is stored in the stack memory of frame f1 is the base pointer register value of the caller function which is function 0 and finally in this stack frame of function f1 we have pushed the local variables of function f1 so you can see that this diagram actually represents the complete stack frame of the function f1 when function f1 was in execution so eip that is the register which stores the address of the executing instruction so eip stores the address of instruction in execution since f1 is currently executing hence eip will store the address of instruction which is being executed eip keeps on incrementing as subsequent instructions are executed right so eip is a register which stores the address of the instruction which is being executed so eip will store the address of this instruction then this instruction then this instruction and so on so when the frame f1 was in a state of execution the value of eip stores the address of the instruction which is currently executed but what about the value of ebp and esp so remind the definition of ebp and esp ebp is a register which stores the address of the current stack frame where base pointer register value of the caller function was saved so you can see in this diagram that the base pointer register value of the caller function is saved here so what is the address in which this base pointer value is saved the address is 84 therefore when the function f1 was in a state of execution the value of base pointer register will be 84 similarly apply the definition esp is a pointer which always points to the bottom of the stack memory now at this point of time the bottommost frame in the stack memory is the stack frame of the function f1 and therefore esp value will be the bottommost address that is the address 76 now let us suppose that the function f1 has triggered or invoked the function f2 right so the address of the instruction which is responsible to invoke the function f2 is 1002 so when the function f1 invokes the function f2 the very first thing that will happen is to push the arguments of the function f2 in the stack memory so you can see that we are now setting up the stack frame of the function f2 and you can see that the very first thing that we have done is to push the arguments of the function f2 in the reverse order in the stack memory now i will ask one question when the function f2 was invoked what was the value of eip register right the value of eip register will be 1002 because it was this instruction which caused the invocation of the function f2 therefore the current instruction which was executing is the instruction with address 1002 and it is this value which is stored in eip 
so the next thing that we will going to do is to store the old value of instruction pointer in this stack frame of function f2 so here you can see that we have stored 1002 that is the value of instruction pointer register in the stack memory of frame f2 now the next thing is to store the base pointer register value of the caller function now at this point of time ebp register stores the address 84 therefore we will store the caller's base pointer register value into the stack memory of the frame f2 so you can see that the old value of base pointer register that is 84 is copied into the stack memory of the frame f2 and now as a final step local variable of the current frame will be pushed into the stack memory so let us assume that these represents the local variable of the frame f2 and you can see that the local variables are the last thing that is pushed into the stack memory now the frame which is at the top of the stack is the frame f2 and we should set up the base pointer register value and stack pointer register value as per the current frame so base pointer register value will now going to store 60 because at this address the caller's base pointer register value is saved in the stack frame of function f2 so going by the definition base pointer register will be updated to store the address where base pointer register value of the caller function is stored in the current stack frame so ebp value will be updated to 60 because 60 is the address where base pointer register value of the caller function is saved in the current stack frame and now the address of the top of the stack is 52 therefore esp register will be updated to store the address 52 so you can see that the green and orange slabs are 4 byte each so you can see this is 4 byte and this is 4 byte on a 32 bit system if it was 64 bit system then these green and orange slabs would have been 8 bytes so green and orange slabs are 4 byte each and are used to store historical data that is caller's frames information this information helps the caller to resume its execution when caller returns so we will see that how the content of orange and green slab of the callee function is used by the caller function to resume its execution when callee function returns so when caller invokes the callee function the current value of ebp and eip are saved in callee's stack frame right so you see that as soon as callee function is invoked in the stack frame of the callee function we copy the eip and ebp register values in the stack frame of the callee function and as soon as we copy the eip and ebp register values ebp and eip registers are updated as per the callee's stack frame right so first we copy the old value of ebp and eip into the stack frame of the callee function and immediately after copying these values we update these registers with the new values as per the stack frame of the callee function so to be more clear let us see one more example suppose the function f2 executes and finally it executes the instruction 2004 so as a result of execution of instruction 2004 function f3 will be invoked that means now we need to push the stack frame of the function f3 into the stack memory so you can see that first we will push the arguments that is passed to the function f3 into the stack memory right now when the function f3 was invoked eip content was 2004 so copy the content of eip register into the stack memory of the function f3 next we need to copy the value of base pointer register so at this point of time the base pointer register value contains 60 so just copy the value 60 into the stack frame of the function f3 right and now as a final step push the local variables of the function f3 right and now we will update the base pointer register value and stack pointer register value to point to the new stack frame of the function f3 so you can see that in this entire mechanism the value of three registers that is eip ebp and esp keeps on updating as the new stack frame is pushed into the stack also note that the callers ebp eip are saved into the callee's stack frame and of course the esp register always stores the address which is at the bottom of the stack memory 